Welcome back to Home Gym Hacks and Reviews and Power Tech Lever Gym Hacks Part 7, the Daisy Chains Edition. Stay tuned. It's been over three years since my first Lever Gym video. Since then, I've made over 20 videos featuring this machine. A lot of equipment is coming on from this garage, but the Lever Gym remains my favorite and most versatile piece of equipment. With that being said, if you purchase this or any PowerTech product, please consider using my PowerTech affiliate link, which can be found on my main YouTube page. It helps me out, but more importantly than anything, it lets PowerTech know that I am helpful to their brand. Today, I'll use a set of daisy chains for every exercise. I've had this set for over three years, and these are some of the most invaluable training tools I've ever had. They're great for moving equipment, they're great for hacking equipment, and they've even helped me work around some injuries. For example, when my golfer's elbow was really flared up, I was able to wrap them around the ab course handles and remove my grip from the exercise. This set is listed to have a max weight capacity of 23 kilonewtons, and according to Google, that's about 5,000 pounds. They're about four feet long, and I have all of my odds and ends linked in my Amazon affiliate store, which can be found in my YouTube bio. Some of these hacks will carry over to the multi-press and other pieces of equipment, but being able to detach the bench from the lever gym makes a lot of these hacks possible, and if you choose to do anything you see, do so at your own risk and at the risk of damaging the lever gym. I love dumbbell pressing but I don't like getting heavy dumbbells into position, and I gave myself tennis elbow while getting the 110s into position. When I looked into the various standalone dumbbell self-spotting options, I wasn't willing to pay the price or sacrifice the space for the really nice ones, where when you grab the dumbbells, the trays automatically pivot back on their own, and then there are less expensive standalone options where you have to grab the dumbbells from way back here and get them into position, and then with some of those, I saw when people were pressing, the dumbbells were actually hitting the trays and then there's the rack mounted options, which I don't even have a power rack, so that isn't an option for me. And then there's the Iron Master, where you have to pull the dumbbells from here, which I'm not real crazy about. And then there's things like the Mad Spotter Hooks, where when I was doing my review for these, I mentioned as the weight got heavier, I don't like the feedback that the hooks provide. And then to finish the set, I have to loop them back onto the bar or onto the lever gym's handles, which can be dangerous if I'm trying to go to failure. After seeing the various dumbbell self-spotting options, I knew it was time for me to hack. It said that necessity is the mother of all invention, so it was time for me to get to work. I tried a couple of more complicated things, but then realized the daisy chains would be the easiest and fastest way to do this, and the least expensive. I typically don't like building things, I just like using what I have and making the most of it. And I've seen people do stuff similar to this, but I think that mine is the easiest and fastest setup. This is really easy. I just loop the band in on itself against one side of the dumbbell, adjust the lever arms to the right height for each exercise, then place the correct loop around the lever arm handle. I took about an hour one day and found the perfect setting for each dumbbell exercise. The downside is I need to start from the bottom position, which I don't find to be that big of a deal. I could see this being helpful for someone who is recovering from a shoulder injury. I could also see this being helpful if I still had the lever gym in my spare bedroom because I had a year-long shoulder injury trying to save my hardwood floors when I was dumbbell pressing on them. Here, there's no need to dump the dumbbells on the floor at the end of the set, which can also strain the shoulders. This doesn't need to be used for every set, just the heaviest sets. I still work in a lot of rest pause training, and this is great for that as no energy is spent getting the dumbbells into position. Getting the dumbbells off is fast and easy. I just take the tension out of the daisy chain and slide it off of the lever gym's handles. For the dumbbell flat press, I continue to use my old red bench, but for all the other presses, the dumbbells don't line up properly. So I need the PowerTech flat incline decline bench, which offers greater adjustability, and the horizontal sliding feature proves to be invaluable. I can use the squat bar for quick and easy adjustments, and for incline presses, I need to move the daisy chains one loop lower for the perfect starting position. Luckily, the daisy chains don't provide any feedback during the press like the mad spotter hooks, and they don't increase the diameter of the grip. I have them all the way against one end of the dumbbell, and my hands barely make contact with the straps. Normally, getting into position for decline dumbbell presses is no easy task, but this hack makes the exercise very easy to start and end. It also works equally well for floor presses. For the overhead dumbbell shoulder press, I have to move the straps to the horizontal handle. As an extra safety measure, I cross the strap in an X pattern so it won't slide off. Now it's extremely easy to start a dumbbell shoulder press without the need to kick the dumbbells into position. I showed this daisy chain chest press in Lever Gym Hacks Part 6 but it's such an awesome exercise and worth showing again if anyone missed that installment in the series. The daisy chains even offer a great incline fly that feels very effective with only a small amount of tension dropping off as the handles come together. 
For anyone who is wondering, the Lever Gems rubber grips aren't showing any signs of wear even after set after set after set. Lever arm seated lateral raises work well. I have isolateral function and the revolving D handles make this exercise smooth and fluid and ankle cuffs could be used too. The bench offers stability. And standing lateral raises work equally as well. I actually like these better than the seated version. One arm crossbody lateral raises work well and provide me the opportunity to cross the center line of my body. Seated Y raises work great on the lever arms. The bench provides stability, but this also works great when standing, and this holds up well when compared to the TRX and functional trainer versions of this exercise. And to round out the shoulders and other upper back muscles, face pulls with the daisy chains provide a full range of motion. For standing dips, I use one daisy chain with a carabiner in the middle and two large carabiners in the upper cable. I raise the lever arms and connect the carabiners for the perfect height. It takes a decent amount of weight to make this exercise worthwhile. 90 pounds feels like nothing. 180 pounds is a decent warm up. I do like the option of having a neutral grip and an overhand grip, which isn't an option on the dip attachment. I can also face the lever gym, but I have to stand back so the daisy chains don't hit me in the head. Here is 270 pounds, 30 pounds away from the lever gym's max weight capacity, and I still don't need to weigh myself down like I do when I use the dip attachment. So for me, the attachment is a much better option. Now I have seen a lot of people do this hack, including Jack Girl Dad and Joe Gray, so I can't take credit for this, although I think my setup is different from theirs. Seated overhead tricep extensions work great using the lever arms and daisy chains, and the bench provides stability. A chest supported tricep pushdown is another solid tricep exercise to offer greater variety with tricep training. For ISO low rows, I loop the band in on itself. I use two by fours as spacers between the bench and lever gym. I connect my revolving D handles to the daisy chains, and I attach and load the leg extension so the bench doesn't tip. This low row feels a lot like the hammer strength low row. It hits the lats hard without stressing the lower back. And one arm pulls feel even more effective than both at the same time. A chest supported pullover works pretty well. I can't get the full range of motion I can with some of my other pullover hacks, but I like that the daisy chains separate as I pull down so the handles don't hit my bench's back pad support post. For this pull down variation, I use one daisy chain with a small carabiner to connect two of the middle loops and one small carabiner in the upper cable. I connect the two carabiners for a pretty good pull down. I can pull underhand, overhand, and neutral. With the bench in the decline setting, I can get a full range of motion. And you may be asking, why not just use a pull down bar? Well, this is a fixed path, which provides greater stability, enabling me to pull more weight. I think Joe Gray was the first person to show this hack, although my setup is different. I don't want to be like those other people who don't give credit where credit is due. The lever arms and daisy chain combo work great for a variety of bicep curls. Facing the machine feels a lot like the dumbbell bicep curl or even the free motion bicep machine. When seated, the handles dig into the back of my hands, but simply by standing, the issue is fixed and this is a really good isolateral curl. I'm reluctant to show lever arm leg extensions and leg curls. They're not nearly as good as the attachment but this series has always been about sharing ideas for people who might be limited on equipment, and maybe someone will see this and think of a way to improve upon it. I would use the Powertech flat incline decline bench, but the handles get in the way of the daisy chains. My grizzly ankle cuffs make this possible. I do like that both the leg extension and leg curl are isolateral. However, the prone leg curl using the lower pulley I showed in Leverage Gym Hacks Part 2 works better. These pull-ins are a great way to work the hip flexors and abdomen, and I like that the Powertech flat incline decline bench provides a lot of stability. I can work each leg individually, and I showed the cable version of this exercise in Lever Gym Hacks Part 3. Here I've donned my quick start sled harness for a good morning variation. This isn't an exercise I can do because of my lower back, but I did want to show it. This is a hybrid leg extension pendulum sissy squat. Here I have the daisy chain haft, and I'm using the quick start harness, which I'll use for the rest of the video. This is a great quad builder without the downside of loading the spine. This is another exercise I can't take full credit for because I think Bullseye was the first to perform this on the lever gym. I really like this movement and I can see this being invaluable for someone with limited equipment. I can also add my squat wedges which provides another great variation and the lever gym's lever arms offer the perfect place to hold onto to perform this. These step ups are an awesome way to target the quads and glutes and simply raising the lever arms to their top position and holding on offers stability and safety. I hope this has been a worthy addition to my Powertech Lever Gym Hack series. With part seven, I think I'm on par with the Leprechaun and Police Academy franchises. 
I also hope I did a good job of showing how versatile these daisy chains are, and they can also be used if you're short on plates to secure dumbbells to your bars or leverage them. Take care, everyone.